Hey, hello and welcome to Rev Talk. This is David Kellum, and uh, I know it's an unusual uh, times that we are going through right now. And, uh, you know, throughout the course of most of the sporting season, we do Rev Talks. We do it at a live venue and uh, have a lot of fun there. Boo Ray was our sponsor this past year, and we just had wonderful shows. Of course, we kind of wind it down. We get into the baseball season. But since the baseball season sort of came to an abrupt halt, uh, the athletic department and uh, our people decided it'd be kind of cool to crank Rev Talk back up at least in this virtual uh, format. And so we're excited to launch it tonight and we're gonna do it over the next 12 weeks, I believe. We're gonna try to at least go that long and uh, everybody's at home, Zoom's a wonderful thing. So we're gonna Zoom people and use the audio for Rep Talk. It's some of the video you might see through the athletic department and, and other platforms and all. And uh, we, we thought about one of the key things for us would be to, to get an update from Keith Carter each week about kind of where we are with the athletic department, what's going on. And, and, you know, everybody's hoping that this thing goes away and we jump into football with no issues and, and all of that. But there's a whole lot more uh, attached to the current situation, not only with our athletic department, many across the country. So we're so excited to give you something to, to do. I know everybody's at home, kids are going crazy. And uh, it's an honor uh, each week, we're gonna have Keith in our opening segment. And here's our athletic director, Keith Carter, already on the video. Hey, Keith. David, how are you? Glad to be with you. Man, great. So let's start with, I may do this with every guest. Let's start with, what's it like being at home with the kids all the time? You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, keep, the, the, keep a good perspective and obviously spend time with them. And, um, you know, we want to get our work done. Obviously, we've got a lot of important work to do, but it does allow time to get outside and, and spend more time with them. So, uh, obviously, a very, very serious situation that we're dealing with here mm -hmm. in, in, our, in our world. But, um, you know, it does give us an opportunity to maybe spend some more time with family, which is a great thing. You and I are, are nature guys. I mean, I live on a 100 acres of my family land that we've had for years and uh, really enjoy it. So I can get out and get a breath of fresh air, probably stay away from coronavirus. It's going to have to – it'll have trouble all the wind we got on this hill. It'll blow it away. But I know you are too, and I know recently you did a little hunting trip, got some turkeys, huh? Yeah, you know, that's the other thing is uh, turkey hunting. It's great because it's early in the morning. You can get yeah. out there before everybody's awake. So I've been yeah. able to get out a few mornings and, uh, and spend some time out in nature and had a little success uh, with my son, Drew, which, is, which has been good. But, uh, you know, I think it's important that you, what, whatever you like to do, whatever kind of uh, recharges your batteries or, or, or kind of frees your mind a little bit, that, that you need to do that. Shannon Singletary, who I think you're going to have on, Mm -hmm. uh, later is a big runner and, and biker. So he likes to get out and, and do that. And so um, I think it's very important in this time. Certainly we, we love being at home with our family. We love you know, doing all those things, but uh, you've got to find time for yourself and, and to kind of keep your mental well-being going as well. And for me, that's, that's getting out in the woods and getting away a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, you, you mentioned Shannon. We're excited to have Shannon Singletary that's going to be with us here a little bit later. And of course, he's associated for health and sports performance. And coming up next, we're going to visit with Jeff Levy. And what we're going to do with Rev Talk is, is get to let you meet a lot of new faces. And boy, Keith, there are a bunch, to say the least, right now, not only in the football staff, but some other areas too. So each week on Rev Talk, we're going to try to introduce you to somebody new. Uh, so that means all the coaches have been around a while. So, oh, I ain't got to do that. <laughs> but, but we may have some of them uh, as well. And then Shannon, that third segment, we're really going to dig a little bit deeper with those people that are having to deal with student welfare. Uh, and et cetera. So we're excited to have uh, Jeff Levy coming up uh, as well. I know you're excited about both those guys. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff is such a great guy, and, and I love what our football staff is doing with kind of their virtual recruiting right now. You're yeah. a lot on Twitter yeah. and very, very active out there about kind of virtually going to different areas to recruit, and uh, they're doing a great job with that. And then obviously Shannon, who's been around Ole Miss for a long time, uh, he's our athletic department liaison with campus on kind of the campus committee that's, uh, that's been really dealing with a lot of these issues since day one. And he's on a call with them every morning at eight o'clock and has done a fantastic job. Felt like for him having his medical background and kind of being connected with, you know, the, uh, the, the mental health professionals in the department, also with the strength coaches, the trainers, uh, you know, these are the people that are dealing with our student athletes every day, whether it be via telephone or Zoom call or whatever it is. Uh, and Shannon really has his finger on the pulse of, of all of that. So he's been great for us on that committee and I'm sure he'll share some really cool things with you later on. I, I know you've got challenges, obviously everybody in their jobs trying to keep things going. have got some degree of challenges, but 
how smoothly has it gone once you kind of, as an athletic department, sort of figured it out, said, hey, here, Zoom's a tool. Of course, we can email, do all the old-fashioned things, too. Well, I think kind of before we came on, we were talking a little bit about how the first few weeks was more just a triage, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to work with real-time information to just put people in the best positions that you could. Um, and I think we, we started off really well. We got our student athletes taken care of. You know, I guess fortunately for us, uh, we were in spring break when all this kind of happened. And so a lot of our student athletes were away. They were either at home or somewhere on a trip and they kind of just went back home instead of coming back to Oxford. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit uh, you know, fortunate for us that, that that was the case, but we made sure that they all were home, that they were settled, that um, you know, they were in a good place. And, and obviously, you know, for us student athletes and, and their welfare is, is our number one concern. But as we kind of transitioned through that, then we had to turn to our staff and what that looked like and were they going to be coming into work and those type of things. And, and obviously, we've been working from home for a couple of weeks now. Um, but, you know, it took us a while to kind of figure that, that out, that new mm -hmm. routine and, and what that looked like. Um, but I do think over the last week or so, I think we kind of settled into our, our daily routines. And that's a lot of this, a lot of, you know, FaceTime and, and screen time, uh, which has been great. But, uh, you know, I think for us now, it's about figuring out, you know, what the future looks like. And we're already thinking about, you know, what the fall uh, could potentially look like and, and kind of working our way back from the fall. Keith, what can you do for the student athletes that are stuck at home? I, we, we talked about this off air a moment ago, too. Uh, you know, we're going to visit with Shannon about some things, but athletic welfare just in general. I know that I've heard about the meal card deal and, you know, academic support is so important. We're doing everything online in that area, too. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, you know, for us, David, we, we want to do whatever we can. It, it really stinks that we can't, you know, see them, touch them, mm -hmm. uh, talk to them, you know, all those things. But we want to make sure that anything we can do that's within the rules, we want to be able to help. And, uh, you know, we got some, some, some indications early on that some of our student athletes were back home and uh, in places where, you know, when they're in Oxford and, and again, we can kind of deal with them and have them right here, we can take care of them. You know, we make sure right. they get three square meals a day. We make sure that they're getting the academic support that they need. Uh, you know, coaches and so many staff members can be there to be a resource but when they go back home, sometimes they're not all in the greatest environment. You know, they all don't have the things there that we have here in Oxford and that they have, have access to. So uh, we started sending some, some meal cards where they could at least have, you know, one meal a day. We call it an incidental meal um, that they're able to have. And so we, we sent those gift cards with basically $15 a day uh, for each student. So $105 a week that, that they could, you know, enjoy. We did Chick-fil-A the first week, Papa John's the second week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to do Sonic this coming up week. And so, you know, maybe not the best, uh, you know, nutrition or whatever, but we know that it's, they're, they're getting food in their stomachs and, and, and that's good. You know, obviously academic support, Bob Baker and his team over at FedEx have done a tremendous job of, uh, of making sure that not only our students are online doing their courses, but that they've got the tutoring sessions that they need. They've got access to, you know, all kinds of different resources there uh, from an academic standpoint. And then, you know, as Shannon will talk to you, you know, mental health, you know, this is a hard time for our student athletes. A lot of them, uh, are missing out. You know, think about our spring sport athletes, you know, they're missing right. out on a, on a whole season and mm -hmm. for them to not be able to play and uh, all, you know, that's just kind of taken away from you abruptly. You know, that's, that's hard to, hard to deal with. So we want to make sure that if any of them are, you know, having, you know, issues with, you know, struggling with that, we want them to be able to talk to Josie and our, our mental health team and, and those type of things. So, um, and then, you know, I've got a call tomorrow night. This will be my second call with our SAC group, our student athlete uh, leadership group. Um, and basically, there's representatives from every team, you know, in that group. And so I get to talk to them. They get to bounce things off of me. And if there's issues that they see within their teams, they can talk to me about them. And uh, Jen Saxon does a tremendous job with that group. And, and hopefully, you know, they're the leadership from the teams that can help us find out when there's issues going on and, and we can address those. So, um, you know, if we're in this for what we're well, – why we say we're in it, it's for student athletes. And at right. the end of the day, we want to make sure we're communicating, we're being visible – uh, I'm sending them every Friday afternoon at two o'clock a video uh, of just an update from me just so that they can see my face. They all have my cell phone number if they need me. So uh, again, we want to make sure we're doing everything that we possibly can for them. Uh, and we can't wait to get them back to campus as soon as possible. Keith, how does the conference office play into this and what's your communications with the SEC office? Well, you know, first and foremost, Commissioner Sankey has been tremendous really since day one, since that Wednesday in Nashville, uh, when all this kind of happened, 
um, and then on into Thursday and Friday when we had to make some really hard decisions. But he's been on top of it. We've had a, a daily conference call, you know, every day at 11 o'clock with all the ADs and the SEC office. And, uh, again, the, the first couple of weeks were just about, you know, how we're going to get through this and, and, you know, trying to just work with real-time information to, to, to make the best decisions that we could. Um, and then recently we've kind of gotten back into more of the, the business as usual type discussions. We had a big agenda at our AD meetings in Nashville to talk about that we never got to. So we're kind of getting to those now. Um, but there's a lot going on, you know, name, image, likeness, uh, one-time transfer, just a lot of different things. Obviously now with uh, an extra year of, year of eligibility for the spring sport student athletes, you know, there's some discussion now around that. So just a lot of things going on, but uh, I got to give a lot of credit to Greg and, and Charlie and, and the whole staff over at the SEC office. They've done a tremendous job. On a, on a personal note, I know your answer is probably be exactly the same as mine, but this world right now, I mean, when, when you think about a world with no sports, we were fortunate to have, to, uh, to have Tony Dungy with our FCA group here recently. And I, and I didn't really think about it until you realize that not only is our world, our old Miss world come to a, a grinding halt from a sports standpoint, but uh, you've got our whole conference, you got all the sports in America, you got all the sports all over the world, pretty much. It, it's just strange, isn't it? It's really strange. And, you know, I think for us that have grown up around sports, um, you know, I, I don't remember a time when I wasn't either playing a sport, watching a sport, yeah. um, you know, talking, you know, to trash about a sport, you know, something and since I was a little boy. Yeah. And, you know, it's just part of our of our, our daily routine. And, you know, again, I think some of this comes and gives us a little bit of perspective about the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, sports are very, very important, but there are other things in life. Um, but it, it's interesting when you, you come home and, you know, you think about the weekends now when there's no baseball series, there's no softball series. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, look at, I look at Jill and the kids. I'm like, what, what are we going to do today? You know, this is what we do. We, we do sports. And so we, we've had to get creative and, and do a lot of different things there. But, uh, you know, I think, it, it think you know, sometimes situations like this, I, I remember when I had an injury one time and couldn't play mm -hmm. for a certain period of time, it makes you really realize how much you love the sport. And I think that's kind of what this is doing, too. It's, it's showing us that, you know, sports are you know, just a, such a, a huge part of, of our, our lives and our routine, especially here in, in Mississippi and the South. Um, you know, it's part of what we do and, and part of our – really our livelihood. So, um, hopefully it'll come back soon. And, and hopefully when it comes back, uh, we'll even, uh, you know, have a, a greater respect for, for sport. You know, and we've done a little virtual stuff with uh, Ole Miss doing the one-on-one -on -one tournament, and my man Keith Carter got knocked out. I don't get it. Well, I think I think John Stroud had a late night uh, push on on the voting. I'm not sure exactly who all he was calling or what was going on because I had the lead on him for a while, uh, and I was a little shocked. I was a little shocked, honestly, because uh, John Stroud is one of the best to ever play, maybe the best to ever play at Ole Miss. But um, you know, I think you got to give a lot of credit to our content team at right. Ole Miss. Right. Uh, you know, just thinking of creative things like that to to kind of fill the void and, um, you know, really, really fun. And, and, you know, some of the stuff going back and forth on Twitter between, you know, some of the, some of the guys that were playing and, you know, it was just a lot of fun, but uh, uh, really cool. And we got some, some, some other cool things that are coming out to kind of fill that, that space as well. Yeah. And I know for you, AD, you're in that, you know, fundraising side of things. So it's closing comments from you and our first segment on Rev Talk uh, tonight, just what's your message to Rebel Nation, not only, you know, our, our donors, but all our fans and all. Well, you know, I mentioned before, you know, first and foremost, we're about student athlete experience and, and their welfare. But, but secondly, we're about our fans, you know, and, and the people that love Ole Miss and, and live and breathe Ole Miss. And it's hard for them, too. You know, we're having one of the best baseball seasons we've ever had, and all of a sudden it's just pulled out from under us. And, uh, you know, people were upset about that, and, and rightly so. But, uh, you know, the first, the first comment is just to be safe out there. You know, try to, try to do what you can to help us get back here in the fall so that we can all enjoy what we love and, and, and some, some Rebel sports in the fall. Uh, but protect your family. Be safe. Um, but the other thing is, you know, we, we just appreciate your support. You know, the, everyone's been so generous. We, we uh, started what we call the Fins Up uh, Fund. And basically, it, David, it's a, it's a kind of an Ignite page that, uh, we'll help out some of our student athletes that have been directly, you know, affected by the coronavirus. Obviously, and Eli Johnson and his family comes to mind. Um, and we've had we had so many people that reached out and said, "How can we help?" And so we we started this fund, and people can can go online and, and help there. But um, we just appreciate their patience and and you know dealing with this just like we are. 
And I promise you we're working hard every single day uh, to, to get everyone back to Oxford as soon as possible. And, and like I said before, I think when we come back, uh, and we will come back. This is gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come back, and we're gonna be stronger than ever. Uh, but when we come back, we're gonna have a, a healthy respect for for what we love, and that's that's Ole Miss athletics, that's sports in general, um, and hopefully it won't be taken away from us again. Hey, Keith, thanks so much. We appreciate you, and we just want to tell the fans of Rev Talk, their listener, maybe seeing this video if we put it in some other forms. Uh, send us some questions. I'm sure you'd love to take questions down the road in some of these future shows. Yeah, no, I would love to do that. You know, I think, again, being interactive and visible, uh, communicating with, with our constituencies, that's what we've got to do during this time. And we have to get creative to do it. But uh, I would love to answer any questions and, and obviously, uh, you know, help out as many people as we can. All right, tell Jill that I've got a Stripe referee shirt if she needs it for you guys. Because I mean, you know, you can't call your own fouls in that house probably. No, we, we're uh, <laughs> it's every man for himself. That's for sure. We, 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 I think we've exhausted every activity we have and, and then some. But, uh, <laughs> hey, only, only a few more weeks to go, hopefully. Hopefully so. I hope you're right. Hey, we're going to continue with more Rev Talk. Coach Jeff Levy's coming up as you're listening to Rev Talk or watching online, and we'll have more in a moment. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with smart choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoicems for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, welcome back to Reb Talk. We just got through visiting with Athletic Director Keith Carter. As we told you, we're visiting now with one of our football coaches. And in this segment, as we crank Reb Talk back up, we're going to see a lot of new faces. And, boy, there's a bunch on the football staff, that's for sure. And uh, we're excited to get to meet them and you get to hear from them as well. And uh, here tonight, we have assistant coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, Jeff Levy. Hey, coach. How we doing? Man, I'm doing good. Everything good. I like your background there. Um, for those that get to see this video world, man, I, I can't wait for that moment for the stadium to be <laughs> full again, man. Hey, man, that, that, may, that makes two of us. And that, I think that makes a whole bunch of us, really. And uh, we're, we're excited to get to that point. Let me read a little bit of your bio to our fans. And, of course, a lot of people know, but Jeff spent two seasons at Central Florida, uh, went to UCF in 2017, December, as quarterback's coach, promoted offense coordinator prior to the 19th season. And, of course, the Golden Knights had phenomenal success, especially uh, offensively. They were fourth nationally in total offense with 536.6 yards a game, the best in program history. Sixth in scoring at 43 points, racking up. 40 points or more in seven of uh, eight games. And only two teams in the country averaged more than 300 yards passing and 200 yards rushing per game that season. And 
there's a little irony here for you, Coach. UCF and your alma mater, number four, Oklahoma, right? That's right. <laughs> That's pretty That's good right. company to be with. But uh, he coached Southeastern University, was at uh, Baylor in five seasons as a running backs coach. Jeff had 1,000-yard uh, rushers five times, and uh, Baylor's 2015 squad put up those phenomenal numbers. They were number two in the nation in, in uh, rushing. And uh, you, Jeff played high school football for his dad, Mike, at Andrews, Texas High. We're going to talk to him a little bit about that here in a moment and earned all state honors as a senior. Signed with Oklahoma, got hurt uh, there, but uh, spent four years as a student assistant coach and then moved on into this world of coaching. Got his undergrad degree at Oklahoma in 2007. You got a wife, Staley, daughter, Cora, son, Kane. What's around the Levy house like? With I've already asked Keith Carter about this and, you know, trying to referee at home with all these kids at home. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've always had great appreciation for Staley and, and moms that stay at home to, to, to raise our kiddos while, you know, while we're not around. But the appreciation, I think, after going through all of this and seeing what it is every single day when, when we don't realize exactly what happens every day while we're at the office and coaching and recruiting and uh, leaving early, getting home late and, and loving every bit of it. But we come home to a household that uh, is put together in a great way that and, and kids are getting raised the right way. And so just a ton of appreciation for what she does for our family and, and uh, really getting a chance to, you know, spend more time with, with her and the kids than I've ever spent uh, – yeah, <laughs> and really in the last you know six seven eight nine years since uh since we've been together and and uh you know been married and had kiddos so it's it's been uh it's been good we made the most out of it from a, a spending time standpoint but uh you know just a great appreciation for what she does for for all of us you know these wives married all you guys and they get the, all this separation your way and i know they complain about you being gone so much but they may kind of i'm getting glad when football starts get him no, out of the house it's, it, it's already started veering that direction there's <laughs> there's no doubt about it so there's uh you know <laughs> there's there's some of that for sure but no it's you, you got to make the most of every situation we're doing that right now and again it's it's been great being able to spend time with with them three I got to tell you my Oklahoma story. I got a little bit of an Oklahoma story since you're an Oklahoma grad. 1985, way, way back, I was doing women's basketball. We go down to the Orange Bowl, and we're playing in the women's Orange Bowl class. We played three days, and the following day, New Year's Day, we get to watch Oklahoma and Penn State. Oklahoma, I think, was number three. Penn State was number one. Oklahoma won the national yeah. championship. We got tickets in the end zone from our head basketball coach, Van Chancellor. We are sitting behind the Oklahoma band and the Tubas. So we didn't see a whole lot of that game. But I got so tickled, Jeff. The tuba guys in front of us, you know, Boomer Sooner, they play it 50 times a game like we do hotty toddy 50 times a game. Sure. But, uh, they were sure. playing da na 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 And the tuba guys had two notes. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and so I, tipped, I tapped one of the guys on the shoulder. I said, man, don't you get tired of doing that? I said, absolutely. But it was a great experience. I got to see y'all modern win it all. And, you know, you don't get that opportunity too many times. So that was kind of. Kind of cool to get to see that. Hey, Pretty let me amazing. ask you this. Right. Uh, despite the, having to be at home and all, uh, just in general, the move to Oxford for the family and all, how's that gone? You, it, is it gone pretty good? I, I can't say enough good things about it. You know, everybody's been incredibly supportive. You know, David, at the end of the day, I really, <clears throat> when it all started, I didn't know a ton about Oxford. I knew a lot about, I, I thought I knew a lot about Ole Miss and Ole Miss football in the Grove and, the game day atmosphere and, and, and the tradition and, and the SEC. But the town of Oxford is, is something that I, I knew very, very little about. So mm -hmm. I got here and, and got to spend some time and getting to know people inside the town. And, and now that we're out in our neighborhood that we're in, it's been, uh, it's been humbling. It's been awesome. Incredible people. Uh, my wife and myself are really, we're small town people. We both grew up in small towns. Um, we come from Orlando which Orlando was an incredible experience, but being able to get back to the small town feel the South and spend, uh, and it's been re really, really good and just appreciative of, of everybody that's been here. Well, and that kind of leads me into your football background. I, did, I read your bio a, a moment ago and, uh, and let's start with your dad and the him and yeah. other influences throughout your career. Yeah. My dad was a huge influence. Um, <clears throat> obviously he was my head coach in high school. He did it for a long time. Uh, was fortunate to have a lot of success and, and, and did a great job motivating every single day, motivating young kids. And I've said this forever, you know, my background's a high school football coach because I grew up that way. 
but I think high school coaches do the best job uh, of coaching guys and adapting, you know, in, in all of football because they got to walk, you know, they got to coach what walks through their front door every single day. You know, they don't get to pick shoes. They don't get to recruit. So they got to adapt. And uh, I think that's maybe one of my, my best qualities is, is adapting to, to the people that are around me every single day. And I get that strictly from him. Uh, so a great influence. My older brother played high school football, uh, another great influence. And, and, and then going off to college and then obviously was in, was in Waco for nine years with, with coach Brawls and, and the entire staff there and, and offensively, you know, great influence what we're doing here. And now <clears throat> having the ability to be here with coach Kiffin, uh, learn from him, work with him every single day is going to be a, an opportunity that I, I couldn't be more excited about. You know, he's, He's, his pedigree is, is second to none, and, and I, I'm just excited to go to work and, and get going. And he brings you in from Central Florida where you had a ton of success. Yep. That's an interesting school. It's becoming like the biggest in the state of Florida. They're having a lot of athletic success and all, and uh, obviously things were going well there. That had to be a good ride. It, it, it was a great ride. It was an incredible two years. Uh, Coach Height, Josh, is, is, a, is a close friend of mine. And I can't tell you how much I learned from him over a two-year span and what he was able to do for me, growing me from being a position coach really into being a coordinator and helping me every single day, understanding the, the entire picture, front to back, back to front, planning it, game planning it, you know, and everything that goes into it 365 days a year. And, and uh, he, he really, you know, put me in a position to, to do what I'm doing today from an organizational standpoint and, and, and teaching me so much about being a coordinator and, uh, and taking care of the offensive side of the ball. You talked a little bit about your relationship with, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin and, and coming to Oxford and all. A lot of our fans want to know, you know, is Jeff Levy going to call all the plays or is Lane Kiffin going to call all the plays? Yeah, I, yeah. we got to wait till the kickoff, I guess. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we, we will. I, you know, I appreciate Coach. You know, he, he came out and – Said it publicly earlier. You know, I'll, I'll be the, I'll, I'll be the play caller. But at the end of the day, coach has been, been so successful offensively, and uh, you know, if he wants to change something, he's he's going to change it. And, and <laughs> he has the right. <laughs> you know, that dang right he does. And uh, all the success he's had, he's, you know, <clears throat> he wants something done. It's going to happen. That's how we'll operate. You know, but I've I've got great confidence in him, and I think he's got great confidence in me to to be able to run with it and and go do it. So it'll be. Um, I think it would be a great situation. You've been involved with not just good offenses, but incredible offenses, dynamic sure. offenses, big numbers and all. Yeah. What what are are your keys, you think, to being successful offensively, especially in yeah. your football? You, I, I think the things that we live by, you know, you're going to hear us talk about being fast, fearless, and physical on offense. Mm -hmm. Everything we're going to do is going to be fast-paced. We're going to run around fast on the field. We're going to coach fast. We're going to play fast. Uh, you know, we're going to be fearless. We're going to call plays in a fearless manner. We want our guys to go out and, and be fearless once they step on the football field and cut loose and go play. And then we're going to be a football team that's going to be incredibly physical. You know, I truly believe there's not been a championship football team that hasn't found a way to be physical in every area of their football team. And so we're going to, we're going to do that, uh, you know, and, and play that way every single Saturday. You know, we, we've, we've installed, you know, some things to help make the game safer and all those things, sure. but it's still a physical game. You got to be physical within those new <laughs> guidelines, don't you? you? You have to, and 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 that's everything you do. You know, from being a ball carrier to blocking on the perimeter to blocking in the core, everything you do, you got to find ways to be fit and physical. It's a physical football game, and again, if we're going to hoist the trophy, we're going to find ways to be physical at uh, at every position on the offensive side of the ball. We're visiting with Jeff Levy and. Uh, evaluation. Let me ask you about that a little bit because because yeah. Lane's talked about that some that you know you get in here you really didn't get to see the guys on the field you really had a short period recruiting and boom you're looking forward to spring and all of a sudden it goes away because of this this virus you can watch tape and you do all that but still I know yeah. the eyeball test is the most Im important how is that going and how do you think you can I guess fix that down the road. Yeah, you know, we felt like we had a really good feel for each one of our guys. You know, come in, we watch every single snap of, you know, of Nick Broker. We watch every single snap of, of uh, John Rice Plumley. We watch every snap of Elijah. All these guys that came back and played in significant time last year, you watch every snap of those guys. So you feel like you know what you have, but you don't – like you're saying, you don't truly know until you get your hands on them and you get on the grass with them. So – Without that part of it, we're still missing that. I, I'd be lying if I said we weren't, you know. So, 
you get to that point, that's going to feel really, really good. Uh, it's going to allow for, for big time growth at every single position, which we're going to need and we're going to want. Um, and we're looking forward to that. I think the tough thing is for first year staffs, you don't know until you actually get on the grass with them, how they're going to respond to how we coach every single day. Um, you know, so once that happens, I think there'll be, there'll be big time growth, hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, no doubt. And minus that, and this is almost an unfair question, but minus that evaluation part of yeah. it, when you get to see them on the grass, what do you think about the offensive roster? Uh, not only the returning players, but who we've got coming in. Yeah, David, we got we got a bunch of guys back. You know, I, I love the fact that I'm sitting there watching tape at the, you know, it's really it's mid December, and I'm watching and evaluating all these guys that are coming back, and I can pause the tape and hell, there's nine guys that are back on offense. Yeah, you know, so that that that's a that's a great thing for us because we got guys that have played, and and you got to live experience. I've you know I've said that and and uh, continue to say it. These guys that have played ball you know, on Saturdays in this league against the people that we're going to play, they'll be more prepared come next fall. So we got we got a lot of guys back, feel really, really good about them. We got to do a great job of developing at a couple of positions, uh, you know, to create some depth. We got to do a great job at the tight end position. Mm-hmm. You know, losing both of those guys, you know, hurts us, but we feel good about, you know, a couple of guys that we've got in the room uh, with the grad transfer coming in and a couple of guys to supplement that spot. So, um, we'll, we'll find ways to make make that work. And then ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, the quarterback position got both those guys back with a strong room and, and feel good where that room's at. So those guys have worked tirelessly to put themselves in a good spot and, and be ready once we get back going. Well, listen, I can vouch for John Rice Plumley and Jerry Neely. They're on the baseball team, and, you know, the yeah. season got cut short, and they were just kind of yeah. sitting their stride a little bit. And I, I know it's tough to be a two-sport star and all that, but – they had those magic little iPad dudes or whatever you gave. Yeah. They were studying yeah. plays. I mean, they were doing it. In fact, they were teaching some plays to Coach Clement, I think, one of our assistant coaches in baseball. Yeah. No, those guys uh, – and, and that's why you, you don't get too concerned about guys like John Rice and Ely going that because they are going to find time to get better. You know, they, those are guys that want to perfect their craft and, and work, uh, work in a great way to make sure that they're going to be prepared once uh, – once they were to get back over here to football. So, uh, and they did that. Not the baseball part of it, man. We just, I know we all hate, you know, the entire Ole Miss community hates, hates what happened. A bunch of people had to go through it, but, but our guys were playing their butt off competing mm-hmm. at a high level. Would have been, would have been awesome to see what they could have got done. Before we let you go tonight, talk about recruiting. I know that the athletic part yeah. is the virtual recruiting thing is really cool for us as fans to get to see all of you coaches, sure. you know, with the cool backgrounds and all this. But how is that going uh, to this point? You know, it's, it's going really, really well. I think it's created a good little buzz for us. And, and I think the biggest part of, you know, people talk about relationships and, and recruiting. And, and at the end of the day, that, that's going to win. We've got to do our job and put a great product on the field every Saturday, which we're going to do. But relationships and recruiting, at the end of the day, that, that's going to be a huge, huge part of it. So being able to get on the phone with these high school coaches and spend time with them and, and finding ways to add names to our list or if we're missing on somebody, coach, who is it? And they give us the name. We get them rewatched or reevaluated. Or sometimes there's a move in to where, you know, there's a kid out there that we haven't watched or haven't evaluated that we would be getting while we're on the road in spring recruiting. So mm-hmm. all we have to do is take spring recruiting and do it really from our house. You know, you're not able to eyeball the kids, but you're still able to gather every bit of information as you would, you know, sitting in front of the coach in, in, in his office. So trying to do those things every day and, uh, you know, bridge that gap from a relationship standpoint. For instance, I'm recruiting Tennessee. I don't know a lot of the coaches in that state. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has been great for me to be able to get on the phone with those guys, introduce myself, and, and be able to talk ball, be able to talk recruiting and, and, and everything else that's going on. Obviously, you spend a lot of time in Texas. You're Texan, so to speak, so you've yeah. got tons of connections there. The time in Florida, uh, and I know you've kind of watched Mississippi from a distance. This state per capita, uh, you know, is, is really uh, per capita. has put out a bunch of, of really good players and all. Just your general thoughts about the state sure. of Mississippi and maybe the next few years in recruiting. Well, it, it is a huge focal point for us. I mean, we've got to do a great job in state. You know, I, I still think at the end of the day, we talked about relationships. We talked about putting a great product on the field. But kids want to stay home, you know, and if you give them a reason because you put a good product on the field, because you have done a good job building relationships, then they will stay home. So it, 
it is critical for us to get the top players in the state to come to Ole Miss. I mean, we're the university of for a reason. You know, people need to people people need to see that, and they, they need to be here to to um, to help us grow this thing in the way that we're we're wanting to grow it. Well, we're looking forward to it, and we're praying that football is going to be here. You know, uh, yes, sir. I, I I watched uh, Coach Dungey the other day on the FCA deal that that he did. Uh, for yeah. a local chapter here, and he he basically taught. I, I didn't really think about this, you know. Not only have we lost uh, football in our country, and uh, all sports, or not football, but sports in general. This spring, you know, we lost spring football, but just sure. the entire world with no sports. It's been a I weird know. feeling, that's for sure. The, it 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 has, and <clears throat> I think I think the thing where we're trying to stress with our guys is it, it, it's not permanent. At some point, this thing it's going to end, and who who's going to be the most prepared and and the freshest and fastest and, and, and ready to ready to go when, when the uh, when the bell gets rang. So that's that's what we're trying to stress with our guys, and they've been been great about that. And just want everybody staying healthy and staying safe. And and then once once it does end, we'll be uh, we'll be ready to roll. Jeff Levy, thanks for joining us, my friend, and uh, David, we thanks. wish you the very best. Appreciate that. All right, we're going to be back with more Rep Talk in just a moment. Shannon Singletary's got some info for us on the health and performance side. That's coming up next on Rep Talk. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Hey, Rebel Nation. This is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, we do welcome you back to Reb Talks. We wrap up this week's Reb Talk with a very special guest, someone who uh, you may not see in the front a lot. He's in the back a lot. He'll say he's in the front a lot, I'm sure, with some of the stuff that's on his plate. But we're so honored to have Senior Associate AD for Health and Sports Performance, uh, Shannon Singletary. Hey, Shannon, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Man, I'm excited to get to visit with you for sure. 13th year at Ole Miss, 19th overall. Is that right? Or? Actually, a little longer. I'm into my 17th year now. Got back got back here in uh, 2004. Well, we need to update your bio. 17th <laughs> year. You were a student manager like in what, 90, 91 or – Somewhere back there. Yeah, so got here in uh, got here in ninety one and got out uh, ninety. Student, excuse me, student athletic trainer. I that's guess that right. was that was Leroy days, huh? Yeah, that's right. Leroy got me started in this profession. I owe a lot to him. Yeah, or you need to beat him up one of the two, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Let me give you a little bio information on Shannon, and then we'll ask him some questions. Uh, he's uh, senior staff responsibilities with sports administration for track and field, sports medicine 
strength and conditioning, sports nutrition, sports psychology, and physical therapy, and uh, all of those areas have become so vitally important to what we do in uh, athletics. In 2013, he took a lead role in the Academic Research Partnership as co-director of the Center of Health and Sports Performance. Uh, the governor's office even put uh, Shannon on a four-year term as Mississippi Board of Physical Therapy licensure, and uh, his role on the board included two years as a chairman. He's got all his degrees from Ole Miss, correct? Is that right? right? All right, all That's his degrees right. from Ole Miss, including a doctorate in physical therapy, and uh, we're just crazy about uh, him and his family and his wife, Molly. Many of you may that are in the Oxford area know that Molly is a partner in the Oxford Pediatric Group, and so they've got a lot of medical stuff on their plate. Shelby, Matthew, Jane, and Molly are the kids, right? That's right. That's him. All right, I asked Carter this and Levy this, and so i got to ask you this tonight. What is it like being cooped up at home with all those children and doing homework and all those things? Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, when, when Molly goes to practice medicine, uh, like she did today, uh, she just asked me to, to check in and make sure they're doing the work and that kind of thing. And to be honest, a lot of times, uh, just getting caught up in zoom meetings and everything about, uh, five fifteen in the afternoon, I go and grab them and say, Hey, clean up the kitchen, get it looking right before mom gets home. <laughs> yeah. Put them to work, right? They need, That's right. They need to That's learn. Right work ethics right now at a young age. No, no problem. Right. With that. Uh, I've heard a couple of stories, different people having to do different things, trying to keep the kids entertained and all that. I told uh, Keith Carter earlier in the show that we need to get J Jill a, a referee's jersey <laughs> to keep that household straight and, uh, and all over. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, my wife and I were out on the back porch probably the first week and a half into this thing. And of course, us both being in the medical field, uh, our kids are like everybody else's. They kept coming to us and saying, Daddy, can I go be with my friends? Or can I go drive here? Can I go hang out with this group of people? And, you know, the, um, you know, we, we thought like everybody else, we needed to set examples and, and uh, let them know all about the social distancing thing. And, right. and it's tough to say no to your kids all the time. But I, I told her one time, I said, look, you're about to go to work. I'm going to be busy. Let's just make a poster board. And on one side, just say no. And on the other side, put up five reasons. And just flip it around. <laughs> I love it. That's great. I answer this every day. Parenting in the quarantine world, right? <laughs> right, right. Crazy. Hey, let's jump in some questions. You sent me some things we, we could talk about, and I wanted to ask you some other stuff too. But one of the things on, on the front end is, you know, I know, a lot of our fans are concerned about what's going on with their student athletes since they're not on campus. But how's our current sports medicine set up or model, uh, you know, work with what we're dealing with with this crisis, Shannon? You know, um, we set our model up years and years ago, um, and really from the foundation that Leroy Mullins made. But when I came here with my experience from Nissan Motor Company and providing uh, health care to a lot of employees, we want it to be a holistic approach. A lot of times you hear about treating the mind, the body, and the spirit. What we do here at Ole Miss is we treat the mental health, we treat the medical health, and we treat the sport performance side. Those are our three areas. And we are made up of about five or six different uh, professionals, um, strength coaches, uh, nutritionists, and also like your name, massage therapists. We were one of the first um, schools in the SEC to hire our very own primary care uh, sports medicine doctor that mm -hmm. we have on staff for Ole Miss Athletics. Um, we have physical therapists and athlete trainers, and the athlete trainers are our quarterbacks. So they, they kind of steer the ship and they lead us. Um, and so the athlete trainers are kind of that cornerstone. And, and, um, but they call on all those professionals so that we can really attack any problem, just like COVID-19, from looking at a holistic approach. So I, I think that's, that's really helped. Uh, but I tell you what, David, one of the things that's really helped these athletes during this crisis is sport. You know, mm -hmm. sports teach us, they teach us to be prepared. They teach us to, to um, have teamwork. They right. teach us to, to think about someone else other than yourself. And they, they teach you to, um, to just be prepared for no matter what uh, happens. Uh, just like in your case, when you step into the press box, you don't know if you're going to announce a nine-inning baseball game or a 17-inning baseball game. That's or you may call seven uh, overtimes at an Ole Miss football game, right? <laughs> no, hey, and for someone who used to complain about that, I'd give anything for a seven overtime football game or a 20 that's inning exactly baseball right. game right now. That's right. But that's the beautiful things about sports is that really these athletes, they're elite, and they've been going through this their whole life about having to yeah. change and be resilient. So that's helped. 
you know, uh, you make a good point too, because you can take the things that we do in sports. And even though, you know, we know our student athletes are missing it. That's what their life is around. But to then take those same principles and apply them to what you're dealing with, what's around you, your family and circumstances that you're having to deal with. I think that's great. You know, how does uh, a pandemic affect the college sports medicine program in ways that, that most folks may never think about? Well, you know, we're all guilty. I'm certainly guilty. Uh, even when I was a fan watching Deuce McAllister and all the mm-hmm. Ole Miss greats uh, run them down the field and after the game they sign autographs and they look like they're having fun. But sometimes it's easy to forget that they're battling the same adversities and the same, same family situations and relationships that we all do, right? Mm-hmm. So when they had to go back home, uh, you start peeling away that onion. You look at all the layers and everything that's involved with just having to be displaced. Some went back into situations where their moms and dads were sick from coronavirus, and so they became the caretakers of, uh, of families. Some went back to a situation where instead of uh, feeding uh, one sibling, that family is feeding another 300-pound sibling, and so you're adding right. financial burden and just the resources that it takes. Uh, and, and, you know, so there's some unfortunate situations, and then there's just uh, some things that you don't think about, just – just um, what it does to the mental health of an athlete to to really have to be almost have to define what is their sense of identity versus their real role in life and that kind of thing. It's just it's just unbelievable that the stories that we are encountering as we as we touch base with our athletes. You know, Keith kind of talks about this too, and the other football coaches and all. You know, when you have them around you, they're like your kids. I mean, it's an extension of your family, and you can touch and feel and, you know, hug on them and, and help them when they have trouble, whether it's academically or physically or whatever. So you're missing that as a person, too. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. It's just so many different uh, layers to this whole thing. What about, what about your staff and how you're handling things like um, injuries when they left or maybe a surgery that took place and all of a sudden they're gone because normally you're dealing with rehab? Yeah. Yeah, so our athletic trainers, uh, you know, we're fortunate here at Ole Miss to have about 16 full-time athletic trainers for 18 sports. And so what they've been able to do is divide up our entire student population. You know, it's close to 400 athletes when you take everybody. Mm -hmm. And so they divided those up, and each athletic trainer calls their roster, if you will, every two days. They text message them. They call them. Uh, during that time, they're, they're, they're teaching them about COVID-19. They're giving them prevention tips. They're talking about how's their family doing. They're trying to investigate whether or not they're struggling with uh, mental health care uh, and things of that nature. But, you know, and obviously it, it, takes a, it takes a whole family. And so you've got the coaches doing the same thing. You've got the uh, academic folks doing the same thing, and you've got administrators. So what we want to do is communicate with each other. What are we hearing from our athletes? What are the real needs, and how can we, you know, go attach that, uh, go attack that? But the other thing is, obviously, uh, our, 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 our athletes that were recovering from surgery even before this happened, that's, that's got to continue, right? right? So they've either been set up with a physical therapist back home or – they're doing like you and I are doing right now. We have HIPAA compliant Zoom uh, for medical uh, telemedicine. Mm-hmm. And so we're able to do a lot of rehab just like you and I are doing right now. Uh, we're able to do a lot of it over the phone. Dr. Crowther may jump on the phone with people. Uh, but that's one of the good things about me being a part of the um, State Department of Health for uh, Physical Therapy and their State Board of Licensure is that I've been able to really keep up with the relief of some of the HIPAA laws some of the consent laws and telemedicine laws. A lot of that is uh, those restrictions have been lowered a little bit so that schools at universities can reach out to their athletes because so many of our athletes are in different states. Well, and checking in on too. I mean, you know, you have student athletes, some that really willing and want to fight to get back and and others that you have to push a little bit and nudge. And so accountability has got to be part of that too. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, you know, it's like you said, I mean, we, there's a lot of our athletes that we have to kind of put the rain on a little bit because yeah. uh, they're overachievers. Yeah. And it's, it's just not just the typical story of, oh, I bet they're laying around on the couch since they don't have to go to class. That's not true. Um, the majority of our athletes, they got here because they're phenomenal athletes and they want to work out and do their craft. So yeah, no they, doubt. You got to stay in touch with them. We heard too, uh, you mentioned to me that and I think Keith mentioned this early, earlier, there's a meal voucher plan um, that's going on. And, and how important is that to the overall performance of the athletes? I know when you got them on campus, we got the grill and all those things we can do. 
Yeah, so uh, what we want to do immediately is really two things. Number one, uh, we know that it's not the answer to the total nutrition and to help their performance, but this is what it does. You know, those meal cards that we're sending out, we're providing them at least one good meal a day for seven days straight. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're doing is we've sent those meal cards out. Well, um, for some people, that's a really good meal. It's important to them. For some people, it just supplements what they already have, depending on their economic situation. So we know that it attacks a need and it helps supplement uh, some folks as well. Um, but what it also does, it gives us some talking points with those athletes and it brings up communication between the athlete and our nutritionist. Uh, we're also uh, rotating uh, grocery store gift cards in there as well oh, okay. so that they can go and, and make good, mature decisions. It's not just going to be all, you know, Papa John, Sonic and, and different restaurants. And we, we've given some comfort food. We think that's important right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also given some more nutritious uh, options and um, things of that nature. But also we want to teach some accountability by giving them some choices in the grocery stores. Well, that's yeah. great, too, because I know the key is when they get back to be in as, as, as best possible position they can be in as we hit the ground running for the upcoming sports season. That's right. That's right. What we want to do the first couple of weeks, you know, this seems like we've been out in this thing, what, three or four months now. It's really it. uh, going into our fourth week. The first thing we wanted to do is just really let's get something out there to the athletes. Let's try to get them into a routine by knowing they're going to get that meal, by, by um, you know, touching base with them with their academics and this, that, and the other. And as we get into this thing a little further, let's start to enhance it at that point. So we're about to start really start brainstorming and putting some uh, teams together to really try to try to take it to another level. Uh, one of the things I want to kind of ask you is how the everything kind of intermixes with the athletic part. What role have you uh, specifically played for health and sports performance and Ole Miss a athletics during this being a crisis? You know, Keith talked about, you know, basically we were a triage at the beginning of this. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, very fortunate um, Keith uh, wanted me to be a member of the campus response team. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is an ongoing team year round, not just for COVID-19, but we have a campus response team. And what that team is all about is not necessarily making the ultimate decisions for the university, but it's a team of professionals and experts representing all the departments on campus. And it's headed up by the provost, Noel Wilkin, who is a phenomenal leader through all this. He keeps us on task. Um, he really keeps us focused uh, in all the meetings that we're in, but our ultimate responsibility is to provide the senior leadership and the chancellor, uh, vice chancellors like Keith Carter as well, the information they need to make that ultimate decision. Right. So we want to problem solve for them. I mean, think about it. Just in a matter of about three or four days, we had to, to decide about extending spring break. We had to decide about whether or not we're moving 20,000 people off the campus of Ole Miss at one time. Those are very tough decisions. Yeah. And there's a lot of criticism can be drawn. So what we want to do is make sure that the chancellor, uh, and of course the chancellor's working also with experts across the country and the state government and the IHL and different universities and all that. But for here on this campus, we want to provide those leaders with the information that they need. So that's been uh, my role there. Inside the athletics department, I've tried to play the same role with Keith, mm -hmm. trying to get him the best uh, – objective information from my team to him in terms of how he should respond to employees that may come into contact with somebody or may have tested positive themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say enough though about the leadership on this campus during this deal. We were in athletics wanted to make sure that um, we were not a lone roof, uh, lone wolf, I'm sorry, uh, working on an island. We are right. a part of the university. We're following their vision, their guidance, mm -hmm. and it's just been an incredible resource for us. Well, that's awesome. You know, you mentioned strength and conditioning. I'm a little, little concerned, wondering if the NCAA, the SEC is allowing, you know, our coaches to, to interact, you know, is, is their off season conditioning being accomplished like it needs to be too? Yeah. You know, that's a tough one. You know, they made so many gains, you know, especially the football program that came in in January, they got a new strength coach, lots of excitement, lots of enthusiasm. They were really working hard. The, the athletes were really buying into it. Um, and then for, for this to happen, this type of adversity to happen is, uh, is a little bit discouraging, you know, but here's the thing, this is what the, the SEC and the NCAA are, are kind of up against is that um, they are allowing us to provide 
uh, instructions and workouts to our athletes. They are allowing us to send some exercise equipment like resistance bands, foam oh, rollers, right. and jump ropes. Right. Yeah, so they're allowing us to send that kind of stuff. But, you know, also um, we have to look at the safety of the athlete. And so what they have wanted us to do, the guidance they've given us is that um, let's just make sure that we're not filming athletes uh, deadlifting 300 pounds or asking them to demonstrate, you know, heavy squats or these really hard conditioning workouts and them not having anybody there CPR certified or first aid certified to help the athlete if something happens. So the idea is – Let's teach them stuff that they can do relatively safe that would help maintain um, where they were um, and, and then just kind of be smart about it. Really more of an education thing uh, and, and things of that nature. But you're right. You're never going to uh, substitute what you could do here on campus. You're just not going to be able to do it. It's the old said principle, right? Your yeah. specific <laughs> adaptation to impose demands, you know? Yeah, yeah no doubt. You know, and, and, and here's the thing, too. I think your, your job and your staff's job is going to change a little bit when they get back. And we're all hoping we get back for football and everything's going to be good. But the football team, uh, the other fall sports programs that go rolling back up in here, those coaches are going to want them to get up to speed as fast as they can. So in a kind of a weird way, nobody wants us to be successful any more than you do and your staff. But I know you got to maybe kind of stand in the gap a little bit and make sure we do it at the right speed, huh? Oh, that's exactly right. You know, so what we'll do is we'll be trying to provide those recommendations. Once we know, hey, it looks like we're going to be back on this particular date or whatever, then we're going to start programming uh, those workouts and trying to ramp them up um, to get them ready. Most important thing that our coaches uh, understand and, and that the, the fans um, need to understand is that there's a lot of research that the first week back from a long transition is mm -hmm. when you have your serious injuries or your heat related injuries and sometimes um, yeah. deaths. And so what we will do during those first seven to 10 days is make sure that we're at a fundamental level. We're observing and we're measuring how long it takes for them to recover. And nowadays, David, we can do that with our biosensors. We yeah. can do that with the technologies that we have. And so that first seven days, we're going to make sure that, that the work, the work to risk ratio is correct. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got the experts to do that. And after 10 days and, and, or seven days, we can look at it and go, you know what, these guys really did what we wanted them to do at home. Which uh, is ultimately start, what you want. Yeah. 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 Let's start ramping them up a little bit more. Hey, we're visiting with Shannon Singletary before we let him go here tonight. You know, uh, on a personal note, a few years ago, Mary and I drive back from Nashville. I've told this story a million times, so you've heard it before. We're driving back from Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Was that the SEC tournament, basketball tournament? I guess we're up there for that. It was, it was Sunday after the Vanderbilt football game. That's what it was, Sunday after Vanderbilt football. And I love driving the Natchez Trace uh, when I'm not in a hurry. When I'm in a hurry, I don't get on the Trace. But the Trace is wonderful. We passed this guy running on the Trace with a slow car behind him. It was Molly in the car protecting – Shannon, who was actually running on the track. Now, that's dedication. And then I guess you ran a while, jumped back in the driver's seat, right? <laughs> I did. That was I did. awesome. <laughs> I did. I was preparing for a marathon right there. And we had worked at Vanderbilt football game. My, my wife and kids wanted to come to Nashville and enjoy the ball game. So I stayed with them and didn't drive back with the uh, football team. And so that Sunday, I had to get 12 or 15 miles in. So I had to, <laughs> to pull over on the trace and let me run it. And, and they were gracious. and. You know, that is awesome. That hour is so awesome. <laughs> we passed him. I saw the old Miss stuff on. I told Mary, I said, that looks like Shannon. That is Shannon running down the Natchez Trace, baby. But it, kind of leading into this final thing I want you to talk about. Uh, you know, several years ago, you helped me a little bit. I couldn't run. My knee got to the point. It was either going to be surgery. And at my age, I don't want surgery. And so uh, I don't know if you remember this. We were staying on the sidelines of football, and I talked about what would be good from a walking standpoint. How much should I walk? Uh, you know, when does it start becoming beneficial? And you kind of gave me, you know, the first 20 minutes is kind of leading into the, the, the final part. And I think you put me on like an hour hard walk. And I still do that today. And so I was very grateful for the, for the free uh, advice, so to speak. But what are some general tips about exercise that you can uh, give today? Not just our student athletes, but people that are trying to stay in shape during, you know, the COVID-19 deal. Just the general population. And I know one of the questions has got to be, does too much exercise, you know, decrease the immune system, help the immune system? Cause that's what everybody's concerned about. I want my immune system to be as good as it can be in case this thing grabs me. 
Yeah, those are great questions. You know, this is what we know with, with research is that and this is not just Shannon's opinion here. This is, uh, this is research. What we know is that we need three to five days a week of at least 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. uh, where we elevated our heart rate slightly and we've kept it there. Um, and for 45 minutes to an hour. And so what I recommend is that um, even during this time where we have COVID-19 that's placed these limitations on us, we have got to, and me and my wife um, talked about this the other day, and we've been uh, doing this for the last three Saturdays, cut the news off. You know, we're in an information overload age, and uh, let's just cut the bad news off. Let's forget about it, and let's take a whole day to where our mind is just being cleansed of all this stuff. And then we're going to go for a walk in the afternoon and I'm going to go for a long run um, the next day or whatever. But what we need to do, David, is we need to make sure that even with COVID-19, we're not afraid to get out and exercise three to five times a week. And that can be something simple as a walk. You got to have fun with it. Um, you've got to also, you, you got to elevate your, your heart rate a little bit, right? Or you're really right. not going to adapt. Right. You right. want to do something that elevates you and puts enough um, taxing uh, on your system to make sure that you can adapt. And that can be just even doing some light dumbbells and uh, jump rope, uh, resistance mm -hmm. bands and that kind of thing. But the key is this, the key is being consistent for 30 uh, to 45 minutes uh, a day for at least three to five times a week um, uh, when we're doing that. But you know, in terms of um, your immune system, um, that, that, that myth has kind of been debunked. Um, we used to think that um, if you really train too hard, you can, you can decrease your immune system, therefore you might catch a cold or, or you're more susceptible to COVID-19 and that kind of thing. But, you know, when you really look at that research, a lot of that research is done on mar marathon runners after they've been through 16 or 18 weeks of lots of long miles, lots of training, and then they go to the starting line and they're sitting there, like I was last year, uh, 30,000 people shoulder to shoulder getting ready to run in Boston. Yeah. And chances are, no matter if I had worked out for 16 weeks or not, I probably was going to catch something from those folks because I was not social distancing, right? <laughs> oh, no, and hey, congratulations on that. That had to be a great, great moment in life. Yeah. And so what, what the researchers have really found is that we need to exercise. It's been proven that's going to elevate our immune system. Mm -hmm. and give us the, the ability to fight off colds and uh, viruses and that kind of thing right now. We're probably not going to overdo it out there. Now, obviously, moderation is key, right? You can overdo anything. But don't be afraid to get out there and exercise. We need to do that. Yeah, no doubt. Just social distance. and, and That's right. That's We've been right. busy with Shannon Singletary, who, of course, heads up our performance areas. And, uh, man, thanks so much. We appreciate you. And, uh uh, we'll, our thoughts will be with you as I know that your staff is a good one and you'll keep uh, driving hard to try to do as much as you guys can until we get football going. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dave. We appreciate you, you getting the word out there. And uh, yeah, our staff is just phenomenal and, and um, we couldn't uh, just couldn't ask for a better group of professionals to try to help these kids. And we're, we're very blessed to have the resources that we have to do that. And by the way, for those folks to listen to us on Rep Talk, we're going to interview some more of those people that are, that Shannon, as uh, in his tent, so to speak. And we're looking forward to doing that as we move down the road. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, man. That'll wrap up this week's edition of Reb Talk. Thanks for joining us. A lot of fun. And we'll be back next week. Same time. We'll crank up a second one on next Thursday and we'll see you next week.